What do you picture in your mind when you think of a college classroom? I think of two typical formats. Lecture style with a podium at the front for the professor and seating for students in rows going to the back. I also think of seminar style classrooms where everyone is seated around one table. In the past, if a professor was responsible for a lot of students, they almost always would use a lecture style layout. Dr. Baird wanted to capture some elements of the seminar style classroom and bring it to his larger class. The way that I was taught to teach and the way that I've come to really enjoy teaching was having a discussion. So creating a context where I could have a discussion with the students. I mean, I've given lectures occasionally, and it, and it can be really satisfying if you, if you get them right and you practice them and they're well delivered and you've got a story and you know where you want to end up, etc. I think lecture takes a lot of, it's a different skill set and I think that it can be done well. But as the class size grew, as time went by, it, that had been a goal of mine was to grow the class, but it was also to not change the class greatly. So how can I do with 60 or 80 students or 90 students what I did with 20 students. A scale-up room is perfect for this kind of arrangement. Scale-up is an acronym for student-centered active learning environment with upside-down pedagogies, previously undergraduate programs. The rooms are designed to facilitate group work, even for larger classes. In Virginia Tech's new classroom building, there are several scale-up rooms, both outfitted with circular tables seating almost 100 people. Each table has a display that can be wirelessly controlled by the professor or by the students at the table. Each table also has a whiteboard, so students can share questions, answers, or drawings with the entire class. This might seem a bit chaotic from the outside, Ten tables, each doing their own thing. But in practice, it goes really well. Yeah, I think it's great, um, especially because in rooms that I've had tables in in the class, and it's a smaller classroom with rectangular tables, but there's only one projector screen. So you kind of just have to, like, crane your neck mm -hmm. or move yourself around in order to see the board, and that's definitely not the case in the classroom that we have Seeking Sustainability in because of all the technology all the different seating areas, the way that the professor is sort of centralized, I think it really... Yeah, I find myself in classroom mm -hmm. setting in an auditorium, you're just like staring straight at the professor or the projector, but with this one, you're kind of like, there's all these other things to look at that it kind of keeps me focused in the class. There are some perks to teaching in a space like this as well. Teaching assistants Mark and Kelly talk to me a bit about this. You know, yes. It's more of a level playing field for everyone, especially I think the classroom reinforces that because it's not, you know, stage on the stage and then rows of desks. Mm -hmm. The way it's set up with everyone being around and I guess Tim's at the center, but then you have kind of your own center point at each table where the students discuss with one another. Mm -hmm. and they just spend a lot of time talking with each other too, not just being talked at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so that... Tim, Tim, or like the expert professor, they more facilitate the conversation and mm -hmm. discussion instead of telling them what to think. But I think the classroom as a whole makes every student a lot more more accessible to me because I don't have to walk, you know, up X amount of stairs to go back 25 rows to find that 85th student, you know, is the same distance from everyone else. So I think that helps. And it might make us more approachable as well. Mm -hmm. Also, with group work built into the room, it makes it much harder for someone to sit in the room in silence. The room itself kind of forces group work. It's very natural. You're already in divisions. You can subdivide your table into two. And uh, there's no awkward looking around, someone getting stranded, because you sit down with a group and you have that group. And it's already implied that, you know, that's who you'll be working with. Well, I like it just because how it's set up. You can talk to people and then you can mm -hmm. see him and see the screens. But he also does the discussions, which are nice because it's not just what he says goes kind of thing. You kind of get all these different perspectives, how one other person saw it. You're okay in a table yeah. so instead of like a lecture row or mm -hmm. like table rows you sort of get a connection because you're looking at other people and you get to see the reactions and you get to see their 
responses, Mm -hmm. and he'll do his laps to tables sometimes, which is something that you don't get in other classrooms. Uh, And I really do think that he makes the most out of the space that he was given. He's definitely more engaging. Having said all of this, there are some challenges to the space. As an instructor, you're not always the natural center of attention, even though you're often in the center of the room. I lose some of my power being in the middle of the room because I can't stand and face them with square shoulders all at the same time. My back is always to somebody. And if I'm making a really powerful comment, half of the room gets the eyebrows, the eyes, the hands, and the, the other side is just guessing, you know, what's going on with me. So there's that. But for other things, like when they get into small groups, everybody, all 90 of them, have a really wide open path to participating in class with lower stakes, without the judgment that they might feel from, you know, 180 years. They can just be a little bit more themselves. So that, that room makes me feel vulnerable in some ways, but it also, I feel like I've got new tools to help my students to feel less vulnerable. It's like a trade-off. It's like I surrender some power and some control, and I feel more vulnerable. But I sense that they gain that power and control, and their vulnerability is diminished. I I hope that's true. And if that's the trade-off, then great. I saw students take on that power throughout the semester. One of the things they used it for was to support one another and to build a community, even if it was just for a few hours a week at our table. What does the transition from strangers to classmates look like? And what are the implications of creating a community of learners? I'll talk about this next time in our active learning story.